through my trash and talking about it. That's what we're doing today. Uh, no, we are doing an empties video slash, I don't know, there's a bunch of these types of videos that float around out there. Uh, what else do they call them? Products I've used up, those kind of things. That's what we're doing today. So basically, I'm going to be talking about items I've used up and tell you if I like the products, didn't like them, or I bought them again, or I found something better. Uh, and if I know myself like I know myself, uh, we're going to be here for a hot minute. So grab a snack, or this video would be perfect, actually, if you guys are cleaning or trying to get some stuff done around the house. This is a really great video. You can just turn on the sound. I don't know. What is 2019? What is technology? I don't know. But uh, you can just listen to this video because I'm not going to be demoing any products or anything today. It's just going to be talking about each product and if I liked it, if I didn't like it, if I'm going to buy it again, that kind of thing. So uh, if you like product reviews, you're going to love this type of video. Either way, I'm babbling on, so let's get into it. The first product in my trash, or I guess I should say recycling, because I know there's going to be like one person that's going to be like, why did you put that in the trash? Okay, recycling. The first item in my recycling is the Redken Hair Cleansing Cream. It is a clarifying shampoo, and I'm so excited that this is my first product because I have so much to say about this. Uh, I, I don't know, I feel like I say this in my hair color videos, but if you don't watch my hair color videos, I am a licensed cosmetologist. I actually went to hair school back in the day and worked in a hair salon for a little while. I no longer work in a hair salon, but I still do my hair, my husband's hair, my mom, like that kind of people, you know, like my family's hair and stuff like that. Uh, anyway. So clarifying shampoo is one of those things that I feel like a lot of people don't know about or they think of it in terms of, you know, getting the green out of your hair if you are blonde or if you've ever been blonde and you go swimming a lot in the summer and your hair turns green because of the chlorine. The clarifying shampoo will more than likely be recommended to you to get the green out of your hair. So that is what a lot of people think of when they think of a clarifying shampoo. But I feel like clarifying shampoos are not talked about enough and they should be used especially if you actually just anything because we go outside there's toxins in the air you have if you have hard water if you use uh certain shampoos and conditioners especially drugstore shampoos and conditioners that may have wax in them the rue fancyful that i use for my silver hair there's I actually have some on right now uh it does rinse out but every every month i would say once a month i will use this product to make sure i'm getting everything out so it doesn't start weighing on the hair if it, it doesn't build up. But if you're wondering, well, how do I know if I need clarifying shampoo? The way you know is if your hair is feeling very heavy and even if it's fine or thin like my hair, but it just feels heavy and it takes forever to blow dry or it's feeling almost sticky to the touch when it's wet, I would definitely recommend some clarifying shampoo and this one's really great. This, like, once again, is the Redken Hair Cleansing Cream. I find that this one's really gentle. It's also really great for anyone who has color on their hair. I don't find that this strips my color. Just make sure because your hair can feel a little bit on the dry side after you use it, just make sure you use a really good conditioner. I don't find that this one leaves your hair super dry. I've tried other ones that make my hair feel like absolute trash. This one, it does feel a little bit, uh, like after you rinse it out, you can feel that it may feel a little bit drier, but once I put conditioner in my hair, it's totally back to normal. So you just have to rehydrate and you should be fine. I've never had problems with this one completely drying out my hair or making it feel really nasty. And it works, it gets everything out of my hair so it doesn't feel heavy or sticky or bad or anything like that. So anytime somebody comes to me with a question about heavy hair that's really hard to dry, and I'm not just talking about uh, if you have thick hair, because even if you have thick hair, yeah, it can take longer to dry, but you know what I'm talking about when you know that it's just heavy and almost feels sticky and just isn't actually drying. Thick hair will actually dry, but when there's product buildup, it doesn't actually feel like it's ever drying. It's like areas of the hair are sticky and damp. It's just not good. So, so the Redken Hair Cleansing Cream is one that I will continue to buy. I have already bought another one. It's in my shower right now. This is a ride or die for me. I also like the Paul Mitchell one if you're looking for another recommendation, but this right now is my favorite and I also really like the smell of it. It's nice and I don't even know what that smells like, but it smells citrusy. I think it's got like a citrus, yeah. It's more of a citrus smell. It's really nice. Love this right here. All right, so next up in my trash, this is the Makeup Artist Choice Phytocell Renewal Serum. 
I mentioned this in my winter skincare routine and I said in that video that I was unsure if this was necessary in my skincare routine. Let me tell you, it is definitely necessary in my skincare routine. I feel like a huge a-hole that threw a product under the bus that was not necessary. I went through that product, didn't repurchase it, was just like, oh, I'll see how it goes. I don't know that I need this. Okay, no. I definitely needed this, especially in the neck department. So in that video, I said, oh, I feel like I was getting this dry, crepey skin on my neck, which may have had to do with all the chokers I was wearing, if we're being honest, but that's besides the point. It is pricey, which is why I did not repurchase it to begin with, and now I know it is worth it because my neck looks 5,000 times better, my under eye area looks 5,000 times better when I use this, and I've noticed my little hairs up here have started growing back. I bleach my hair, and I already have like a hairline like my mom's where we we're not bald, we just like have thinner hairs here and I'm, they're starting to grow back there. And I read in the reviews that people love this for their eyebrows as well. So if you're trying to grow out your eyebrows, maybe give it a shot and see if it works. So yes, I repurchased this and I will continue to repurchase it. And I love it morning and night on the neck area, under eye area, and all I put it all over my face but I noticed the biggest difference in my neck area for sure. All right, so next up in my trash is the Sephora Waterproof Retractable Eyeliner. Uh, if you watch my makeup tutorials, you know that the Possessed Method is all about this eyeliner and has been for quite some time. And I don't even remember who told me about this. Somebody told me about this eyeliner and I don't remember who it was, but all I know is this is the best freaking eyeliner for your waterline and your tight lining situation. So any of the inner eyeball situations happening, this is the best for the, the job. So there's something about a pencil with the wood and putting it near my eyeball that's always weirded me out. So this one's a retractable thing where you just, you know, retractable, like you just roll it up, you know what I mean? And then it has a smudger on the other end, although this eyeliner is not my favorite for smudging. I personally like the Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliner for smudging because I think that's a little bit softer. This is not as soft, so I feel like when I'm using the sponger, I'm pulling a little bit more than I'd like in the eye area, but that doesn't matter. I use this for my tight line basically every single day to make it look like I have a bunch of eyelashes that I don't actually have in real life. But the reason it's so amazing with tight lining is because it does not transfer. If you've been looking for a black eyeliner that doesn't transfer to your lower lash line, or sorry, your water line. So, you know, when you try to tight line, if you've ever tried to tight line, uh, when you're getting up in there and doing the possessed method, and then afterwards you're like blinking, and now you have black eyeliner in your water line, you weren't even wanting black eyeliner there, you were just wanting to leave it blank. You know, you don't want to put it there. Totally understand that's what happened to me every single time and I couldn't find an eyeliner that didn't transfer. Enter this one. This one does not transfer. It's waterproof. It's amazing. It's the best freaking thing ever. I will link it in the description box because if you've been looking for an eyeliner that doesn't transfer, this is it. This is it. So next up in my trash is another favorite skincare item of mine that I can't get enough. This was also in my winter skincare routine last year. I will put a little tag or a link to the video up here so you can watch it if you want to see a more in-depth review and me talking about this product right here. It's seriously the number one product that has changed my skin. Not only did this help get rid of my adult acne, but it keeps it at bay. I use this morning and night and it keeps my skin looking like I, it, nothing surfaces. If they do, they're very, very tiny and are gone really quickly using this. If you look up Mandelic Acid Toner and Acne, Hormonal Acne, you will see some before and afters. It is freaking miracle, I swear. And if you read the reviews over on Makeup Artist Choice on their website, and it was just review after review after review of people loving this product, it does tend to dry my skin out a little bit. If I did not use this product, my skin would not be as dry. But I take, I don't know, 
I choose my battles. So I would rather have a little dryness that I can control than the acne that I that I get otherwise. So it's supposed to be a toner, an acid toner, that is actually gentle enough for sensitive, dry, irritated, all those angry skin problems that us sensitive skin people have. So it's actually, it's from an almond or something. I don't know, there's all this science behind it. And all I know is it's great for people with sensitive skin. So that's why I love it and it works. And I ran out recently and didn't use it for probably a full two weeks and my skin, it wasn't breaking out like it used to, don't get me wrong, but I did, noticed some bumps right here like I had one pimple here but then I had some bumps here and then some some texture over here that started happening either way I love this product and cannot live without it I already have two backups I buy them two at a time because I cannot go without this it's the one thing it is the one thing actually I have a lot of things but this is one thing all right, so next up in my trash, we have two lotions that I was using for a while, and I'll start with this one. This is the Zum Body Almond Lotion, and it says Shea Butter and Meadow Foam Seed Oil Body Lotion. And the Zum Body brand, I believe, is local to Kansas City from Indigo Wild. Yes, Kansas City, Missouri. And I either get this from Whole Foods or Natural Grocers is where they sell it here in Kansas City. So not only did I love this lotion because it's very heavy duty, it is very nice and moisturizing on my dry ass skin, especially in the winter. So I loved it for that reason. But let me tell you the scent of this. Hold on. It's so good i love the smell of anything almond and i love like my mouth is watering because i also really love almond cookies and almond joy and almond anything and everything when i use this one up i bought some other lotions that i'm trying to get through but as soon as i get through them i'm going straight back to this because this is seriously my favorite body lotion ever so moisturizing smells so good but not too sweet not too Okay, and also not too abrasive. So sometimes these natural lines, they have scents that I'm not crazy about. Like I'm not a big frankincense person. I'm not huge on patchouli. I know when you love it, you just love it. And when you don't, you can't stop smelling it. It gets in your nostrils and all you do is smell patchouli for like weeks. But I love this. It smells so freaking good, it's so good. So I'm going right back to this as soon as I am done with the lotions that I have because it's my favorite ever. Ever, ever, ever. Love this. So the other lotion I tried was this Hemp's Age Defying Hydrate and Firming Lotion. So my mom swears by this stuff. She loves it. She gets like two at a time of these uh, and she swears that it makes her skin firmer and anti-aging and all of the things. So I was like, okay, I'll try it. It seems like, you know, she really loves it. So I'll try it. And I really did like it for moisturizing. The one thing I really love about all Hemp's lotions is I feel like they're not too heavy weight. They don't, uh, they absorb really well into the skin, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you don't feel slimy. I love that about these. I don't feel slimy ever when I wear these. Uh, where the other one I mentioned is a heavier, it doesn't feel slimy, but it is a heavier shea butter kind of moisturizer. So it is more for winter for me, where these are definitely a great summer moisturizer for me. The only thing that I don't like about this is the scent. It's not the scent when I'm putting on the lotion. It's not that. It's after I'm wearing the lotion, I kept getting these whiffs of cigarette smoke. For some reason, it smells like cigarette smoke to me. I don't know where I'm getting that. Like not cigarette smoke on like coming from a cigarette, but like on your clothes and then someone's wearing perfume with cigarette smoke on their jacket. That's what I kept smelling. And I, I I would sit there and be like, who's who's smoking? And it was literally me, my skin. I do like Hemp's uh, lotions, but I won't be repurchasing this one because I'm not into this scent. So the next thing in my trash is a makeup product. This is the It Cosmetics CC Cream in the shade Fair, which I literally cannot stop talking about in this whole channel for the last however many years. This has been my favorite ride or die, holy grail foundation for the last several years. It is my favorite formula ever for dry skin. It is super moisturizing on the face. It doesn't look dry. It doesn't crack. It's not too oily. It doesn't slide around. 
and it has SPF 50 in it so you don't have to wear I almost said foundation no you don't have to wear a sunscreen under it and it protects it's just the best overall foundation and I love it so much if there was just one shade lighter than fair I would be a happy camper but I don't think I'll ever stop purchasing this even though it's darker than me all right next to my trash is a body wash or a shower gel or whatever I'm gonna call it this is the lush plum rain shower gel and it is the little guy right here just a little mini bottle I love these little mini bottles from lush because I like to switch up my scents in the shower depending on the season. So sometimes I don't get through one of those big old jugs. So I like these little small guys. This one, oh, this one was so good. Between the Plum Rain and the Rose Jam shade, I love both of those sh shade scent. What am I doing? This one says that it has sweet fruity blend of plum juice and Sicilian mandarin oil. I love a jammy scent, like deep plums, cherries, uh, strawberries, but like jammy though, like the deep rich scents of those, if that makes sense. Uh, it just smells so good. So I love this plum rain scent because it definitely has that robust, Plum scent it is so good, it is so good. But it's not too sweet. It's just perfect for the shower where it kind of wakes you up a little bit, but it doesn't like make you want to be like, okay, I gotta get out of here or I'm gonna get a headache kind of situation. So I love this. I did not repurchase the Plum Rain because I like switching up my scents a lot, uh, but I did repurchase the shower gel, the Lush shower gels because I love their shower gels and I do really like their scents. I repurchased the shower gel and the scent rose jam which is a rosy and jammy once again a jammy but love the lush shower gels all right next up is another shower gel that i this took me forever to get through but i had it it i don't even know how old it was or when it expired or whatever it was just in it was one of those situations that ends up in your what do you call it your linen closet or wherever you keep your shower gels and it's been in there forever and you're like okay i just need to go through it uh it is this dove Go Fresh Cucumber and Green Tea Scent Body Wash. Uh, I do like this scent. I know exactly what it smells like because I wore the deodorant of this one for years and years and years. And uh, I just was ready to move on from this scent. I like the body wash. I thought it was moisturizing and nice on the skin. I liked it. I thought it was great but I'm over this cucumber scent. I even had to move on to a different scent of deodorant. I think I'm in like the coconut realm right now. I did actually like the body wash itself, but I'm kind of over the scent at this point, so I won't be repurchasing this scent. Um, and I'm kind of on a lush body wash kick, but yeah, not repurchasing this guy. Sorry about ya. All right, next up is hair dye or hair dyes, whichever one you wanna say. Uh, this is the Lime Crime Unicorn Hair, and I've got the shade Bubblegum Rose here, and then the shade Tweet here. This one still has a little bit of color in it, not much, no, definitely not enough for a head of color. I use this for my, what tutorial was that? It was my Rainbow Sherbert hair color is what I used it for. And I loved these hair colors. Actually, this was probably one of my favorite hair color combinations that I've ever done. The Bubblegum Rose shade was really beautiful, really bright on the hair and lasted a long time. I will say this did not fade out super fast on me, which for a pink is saying a lot because pinks typically fade super fast. That being said, I wouldn't dilute this product because I feel like if you did dilute it, it would fade a little bit faster the fact that it is so bright neon it really did give it a little bit more lasting power so i really like this uh, the shade tweet on the other hand faded really quick like one or two washes and it was gone but i did not realize that this one is actually their tint line so this is their hair dye line their bubblegum rose shade where the tweet shade was more of a tint so it's not supposed to last as long it's supposed to give more of a wash to the hair I get that now. I totally didn't pick up on that when I first used this. And I was like, wait a minute, the yellow's fading really quickly. Uh, but yeah, it's because it's a tint. So I think this shade overall is really beautiful and it'd be really great for those of you who may want a very, very, very temporary color. Maybe you just wanna throw some yellow over your blonde or just 
try it out and see if you like it these tints would be really great for that loved both of these had a really good experience with unicorn hair I also used their what was that pony shade loved that shade as well I thought it was really nice so so far I've had a really good luck with unicorn hair and I will most likely use it again for hair colors in the future because I do really really like these so yeah all right so next in my trash is this urban decay chill setting spray and let me tell you I love this stuff. I am not a big setting spray fan, to be honest with you. I feel like it dries out my skin and make my foundation look a little bit dry and cracked and broken up a little bit. I, I just have not had that great of luck with setting sprays until I met the Urban Decay Chill Setting Spray because I'm pretty sure this is for people with dry skin because it's cooling and hydrating. I think other setting sprays are targeted towards uh, you know, making sure you don't get oily throughout the night. And I have the opposite problem where I never have oil, period. <laughs> I am so dry. So setting sprays can break up my foundation, make me look really dry and my skin look really parched. This makes my skin look really nice and dewy and healthy and it makes my foundation look great. It makes my highlight pop. It does all of the things that I see setting sprays do for other people. But this one does all of the magical things that I have expected out of setting spray and it does have a really cooling effect to it which I love as well it feels so refreshing on the skin but yeah love the Urban Decay Chill Setting Spray love it already have another one been using it live for it all right so next to my trash is another hair care product this is the Olaplex Hair Perfector number three I cannot stop talking about this stuff this little tiny bottle saved my hair took it from literally breaking off at my shoulders, it wouldn't grow past here, would break off, was looking frayed at the ends, was just not, wasn't good, and it wasn't gonna grow, that's for sure. But basically what Olaplex does is it rebuilds the bonds that are broken down when you're bleaching or using heat or any sort of damage that's happening to your hair, it's rebuilding the bonds. So my hair looked shiny and it felt like it was growing faster and it wasn't growing faster, it was just not breaking off anymore. So it was growing faster than it was breaking off, which I had never experienced before. And now I have this super long hair and everyone's like, how did you get it that long? Don't you bleach the crap out of your hair? And the answer is yes, I do bleach the crap out my hair but I use Olaplex. I use number one in my bleach which is only for professional use I believe. Put it in my bleach, use that. But for the longest time I was only using number three. I only started using number one like last year. So my hair was already growing long and thick and shiny before that just using the number three alone. They also came out with a shampoo and conditioner which I am super interested in trying and I'm going to be purchasing as soon as I go through the shampoo and conditioner I have now. If it's anything like this, I will love it. I already bought, I have like three backups. Love this thing so much, Ugh, love it. Also in my trash, I have some mascaras that I guess I wanna talk about. Uh, let's talk about, we'll talk about these. All right, so the first one is the Urban Decay Troublemaker Mascara, which I love the packaging on this. It's like this holographic, textured, different color situation. And I loved the packaging on this. And that's about where it stopped for me. I actually don't know if they even still sell this because I know they switch up their lines quite a bit. So here's the thing, I don't, know that it was a mascara that I didn't like as much as it was the brush. Or maybe I just don't like talking negatively about anything because it's just not my style. But, okay. If we've been friends on here for a while, you know that I am not a big fan of these plastic wands. The plastic applicator, the mascara brush. That's what I'm talking about. I like the big, fluffy, furry looking brushes the Urban Decay uh, Perversion Mascara has it. The Better Than Sex Mascara by Too Faced has it. It's more of those like brushy feeling, soft, bristly, thick brushes. I like those kind. I know not everybody likes those kind of brushes. It's totally preference. Some people prefer these more plastic brushes because they feel like they can get in there and have more control. And sometimes the big bristly ones get everywhere and kind of, you know, are difficult. Totally agree with you there, but I find that these plastic bristly, I feel like these plastic applicators 
hurt or brushes hurt my they hurt me when I use them. So that's the only reason I wasn't really a big fan of these. I did give it several chances. I don't remember if they made my lashes look really big and full. Actually, plastic brushes, once again, I don't feel like the plastic brushes make my lashes look really full. They make them look really long, but those one bristly ones, the furry looking ones, they get my lashes looking big, voluminous, long, like all of the things where these plastic ones just don't do it for me. So no, I won't be repurchasing that. Uh, next was the CoverGirl Flourish by Lash Blast. This was another one that had the plastic applicator. Um, this one is not nearly as abrasive, I will say. I could tolerate this one. I actually really would like this for my lower lash line. It's not super tiny, but it's small enough to where I can get my lower lashes and not feel like I'm getting mascara all over the place. Um, another thing, this, I don't know if this is supposed to be the black, this is supposed to be the black shade, but I found that this black shade was a little bit on the gray side, it wasn't pitch black. I think for length, this one's a good one. And I also think for a lower lash line, it's really good, but if you're looking for a super jet black mascara, and a lot of volume. I didn't get that with this. All right, last mascara is the Buxom Big Tease Mascara. I loved this mascara, and I actually read some mixed reviews on it because I think some people don't like the brushes that I like, which is totally fine. We're all different and have different preferences, but this one has more of a tapered brush, but it's that soft, bristly type of brush, not the plastic painful brush. I really liked this. I found that it gave a lot of volume and I mean a lot of volume to the point where once it started drying out it was a little thick and unmanageable but that's okay. That typically happens with the kind of mascaras that I really like is when they do start drying out they get really thick and kind of clumpy because that's the kind of mascara they are is to kind of build up like get those really thick lashes almost spidery looking which is what I like. So I loved this brush. I loved the mascara. It was really, really jet black. I loved this. I read some reviews though that weren't so good on it, but I think it was because people were like, oh, spidery lashes. I love that. I was a preteen in the 90s, so I love a spidery lash. I'm not gonna lie, I loved it. So I really did like this mascara. Almost forgot about it. So I'm glad that I just reminded myself because I love this mascara and I will totally repurchase it if they're still selling it. Next up is the Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse Balm, which is a, it's pretty self-explanatory, it's a pre-cleanse balm. It's like a, it feels like a thicker kind of balm, is what it feels like, uh, that you rub in your hands and it's, it becomes more of an oil. You put it on your face and start working it into the skin and it breaks down your makeup splash some water on your face and try to get some of it off and then you use your cleanser or whatever. All right, so the thing about the Dermalogica pre-cleanse balm is back in my winter skincare video, I said that I liked the pre-cleanse oil better than the balm. And I lied <laughs> because I went back in and tried this again because I still had quite a bit left. And I was like, oh, I'll try it again because my oil was kind of running out and that's the one I preferred. And then I started using this again and I was like, oh, you were so wrong. The balm is so much better. And it really, I, I like it better now because I feel like you have a little bit more control over it. And although it does leave a little bit of residue on the sink that's annoying, overall, I like this better. I can't lie. So um, this one is a winner. I already have another one that I've been using and love it. I I will definitely be repurchasing this. It's one of my favorite things and I have to have it because it really does a great job breaking down lip, um, liquid lipstick especially. I just put it on my fingers a little bit and then rub it in and it really breaks down liquid lipstick. Literally every single brand that I have, it breaks down. So love this, we'll continue to use it. One of my holy grails right here. Next in my trash, gosh I have a lot of trash, okay. Is the Pureology Perfect for Platinum Conditioner? This is what it looks like. So, uh, they discontinued this line and I am devastated right now. I loved this whole line. It was my favorite line for platinum hair, for any high levels of lift, if you bleach your hair or if you have fashion colors. I loved this whole line for it. I felt like it kept my hair looking healthy and shiny and beautiful. Between this and the Olaplex, that was my ride or die, so I don't know what I'm gonna do next. I think I'm gonna try the Olaplex shampoo and conditioner, see how it goes. 
Uh, but I'm really sad to see this line go because this is one of my favorites. This was the Pureology Perfect for Platinum. Farewell, I will not be repurchasing you because you do not exist. <laughs> Next is the NYC High Definition Liquid Eyeliner. Looks like this. Uh, this is an old one. I haven't used this in quite a while. I used to love this eyeliner because the felt tip on it was very firm. If you, maybe I can do this. It was a very firm tip. And I felt like I had a lot of control over it. So it's not the blackest eyeliner ever, actually. it's It can be a little bit patchy and dry out, and I didn't find that it was super black. At first, when I, you first get it, and you first use it, at least in my opinion, I thought it was super black, and I thought it was really awesome. But it doesn't last that long, but that's okay. I really just liked it to outline my wing because I felt like I had a lot of control over it. So I could get a really good outline since the tip of it is really firm. So I could just draw the outline really nice and then fill it in with eyeliner. But then you guys introduced me to the NYX Epic Ink Liner. Uh, it is the blacker than black, most beautiful, consistent, doesn't dry out super fast liquid eyeliner and it is my favorite ever. Um, it does not have this firm felt tip. It is more of a brush kind of feel. So it does take some getting used to. But if I did get out of control again with my eyeliner or get out of practice, I would maybe go back to this to like once again map out my line and then go over it with the NYX one. But overall, I don't know that I missed this. I really honestly didn't even think about it. But I loved this for so long, especially for control over my wing. So um, yeah, not repurchasing it, but yeah, loved it. It was a good friend of mine for a while and, <sighs> but I'm not really that sad to see it go. So next is the Dermalogica Calm Water Gel. And I have another one that fell off of my lap onto the floor, so I'm not going to pick it up. But I have two of these that I went through. And this, oh, this is one of my favorite products of all time. Once again, I mentioned this in my winter skincare routine. And I am still not over it. I mentioned in that video that I thought this was a complete joke. When I first got it, I opened it and was like, there's no way this little gel is going to hydrate my dry ass skin. And I was so wrong, so, so very wrong. So there's a lot of reasons I'm obsessed with this gel, but for one, texture. So I thought the best thing to do for dry skin was to load up on a bunch of thick products and just that would, you know, be good for my dry skin. It would cure it, right? Uh, wrong. So I ended up putting a lot of moisturizers on my face. I tried a bunch of different ones and I kept getting texture, especially right here and on my forehead where you would straight, it was like these little tiny bumps all over. They looked like little pimples almost, but they weren't. Also, I would get this hot, especially in the textured area, hot, angry, almost like if I put things on it, it would almost burn. It was just hot, angry skin. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about if you have dry skin. But any dry patches were just hot. My skin was mad as hell at me. And this, it says calm water gel and it's not kidding. It is calming. It is so calming to my skin. All my texture is gone. My skin absorbs this. It doesn't leave it feeling slick or terrible or greasy. It doesn't leave any residue on my pillowcases. My skin just absorbs it and it feels amazing. It doesn't feel stretched out or hot or anything. They have an entire ultra calming line. That's what this one is from. It says ultra calming down here. I want to try the rest of the line actually uh, as soon as I am done with my cleansers and a couple other, I, I don't know what else is in that line, but I am going to try the cleanser at least because I do love this product so much and it has changed my skin so much, especially my texture and irritation. So I will be continuing to purchase this till the end of time. Basically, I love it. Save my skin, seriously. One last thing, this is the Milk Makeup Concealer. It's the Flex Concealer in the shade Creme. Uh, these concealers, first of all, I'm about to cut the end of this open and just use the rest that's in here because I know there's some like on the side still. That's how much I love this concealer. Um, they sent over a bunch of different shades and I love every single shade for a different reason. So this one is a little bit darker. 
uh, for my skin tone. So I don't use, and it's kind of yellow too for me. So I don't use it for my under eye area, but I do use it as a primer for eyeshadow and I love it. It's definitely a really creamy consistency, which is really perfect for an eyeshadow primer because the eyeshadow kind of just sticks right to it and then it blends really well. It's such a nice concealer. I love how creamy and smooth this concealer is. Seriously, I love it so much. They also have a shade porcelain that they sent over, which is really light. It's a, more of a highlighting concealer on me. I am not the fairest of them all. So it is more of a highlighting concealer for me. The fair shade is almost my exact skin tone. It would be considered probably a little dark but it's this perfect neutral that covers my dark circles. It's not a highlighting look by any means. It's more of a natural concealer look, which I've been more into, not natural makeup, let's be honest, but you know, like the under eye, I don't really like it super highlighted lately, but uh, the consistency of this is maybe my favorite thing ever. It's such a thick, creamy concealer, and it just gives a very nice, smooth look to the under eye. And I find that powder goes over it really nicely. It doesn't creep up on it, on me at least. I will definitely be repurchasing the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer in the shade Porcelain and Fair, probably, but Fair for sure because that's what I've been using in the under eye. Covers my dark circles. Uh, is not, like I said, highlighting, but is almost that perfect shade. I love this so much. Did I have anything else to show you? I think that's it for now. I had some home stuff. That some home empties. If you guys want to see those, like I have some laundry detergent, cleaning supplies, those things. If you guys are interested in seeing some of that, also like air fresheners, candles, those kind of things. If you want to see those types of empties, let me know down in the comments because I'll totally do one. I just didn't want to make this 300 hours long. So yeah, just let me know down in the comments about that. But we are done. I hope you guys enjoyed this empties video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. Say hey, ghoul, hey down in the comments because you know I love talking to you. Also, let me know if you like these kind of videos because I will do them again. Anyways, hope everyone is having a great week and thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.